What time is it? We'll look at that. It's 20,000 mile review time. It's a beautiful day outside. However, there is a bunch of activity going on. So I'm in my friend Alex's garage here in Northridge, California. And we're going to talk about this little beast on its 20,000 uh, mile 20,000 mile um, milestone, I guess you call it. So uh, let's get with it. I'm going to probably go inside and talk a little bit and then we'll come back out. And well, hello. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Steve Rom, um, and this is Izzy. Izzy travels around the country with me on our little Himalayan. And today we're going to try and talk about uh, what I feel about this bike after 20,000 miles. Actually, to be fair, I bought it at 2,000 miles. Paid $4,000 for it. It's a 2019. We'll talk about any modifications and things I'd change and all of that. But one of the first things I'd like to say um, is that this is probably not the bike for you. I love this motorcycle. When I say it's probably not the bike for you, what I'm saying is it's a bike for a specific type of mode. What you need, baby? Hello. You're interrupting the video. Okay. Someone needs to be the center of attention. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Back off. All right. <laughs> I'm going to be back in just a moment. Years ago, I ran all over the country. I had a 650 Suzuki B Strom. Uh, I was very happy with it. I probably had 30 some bikes throughout life. Yeah, I'm old as dirt. And um, it was perfect for the mission. Izzy and I live off the motorcycle now. We travel everywhere. At times, we need to stealth camp and run out into the desert or in between the trees. At times we need to make it down the highway, but we're not in any hurry, thankfully. Um, and this motorcycle works out for us. One of the things that's really important in getting any motorcycle is understanding whether it's the right bike for you, for your mission, for your needs. You can say this bike goes off-road, it goes off very well, much to the surprise of a lot of people, including myself. Um, much better than my V-Strom. However, it's no dirt bike. It doesn't go flying over the whoops. I would take it, I would and do plan to take it on the Transamerica Trail at some point. Uh, I think it'll be a good bike for that. It's a good bike for running around town. It's a lot of fun. It gets a lot of compliments. It's a good, reliable bike. And we're going to talk about the reliability and what it takes to make it reliable. Because I wouldn't say that right off the bat. But... Uh, this is a very specific bike. If you're looking for something very fast, forget it. But it can be ridden. I've ridden it, you know, 700 miles in a day, multiple times, um, without a great deal of discomfort. Uh, I have made a change in the cam and sprocket, so it will comfortably run along at 70. I generally tend to run it at about 65 in the slow lane if I'm on the freeway, but it has the capability of getting up to 75 or 80 to pass somebody that happens to be going 60. Uh, where it gets a little scary is if you have to make some aggressive lane changes or things like that, relying on the power. But uh, aside from Los Angeles, which is where I am now, riding in Los Angeles traffic on the freeway, um, it's never really been an issue. You're just not in a hurry. Uh, and you're, you know, you're right lane happy. Uh, the fuel injection works very well. It goes to good altitudes. It definitely loses the power. Uh, thin air does not produce the horsepower when you're starting out with I think 23 or something like that upping it to 27 with a cam uh, <laughs> when you lose 20 30 percent of your power it drops off quickly so uh, you know it's no monster there but it gets you everywhere that you want to go whereas some places may get some of these bikes my, my strong would it get me where I wanted to go fast except where I needed to go off the road and, and get away from things Somebody with a great deal of dirt experience might argue that. And I can say that the Himalayans given me so much education and uh, more confidence in the, uh, in the dirt aspect that I probably, if I had another V-Strom, would do, uh, do better. And, and, and frankly, now that they popped that 800, v, or that 800 parallel twin 
with the 21 inch front wheel, uh, <laughs> it's looking tempting. However, I can't complain about this. One of the things I love about this motorcycle is the company. Uh, if you look at a few of their ads, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a couple of the video ads down in the links. You'll see the attitude of the company. Even the new electric bike they're building, uh, which I would just dearly love. Somebody tell Real, Roy Enfield, Royal Enfield, uh, which I'd dearly love to be part of, uh, it's very retro, it's very strong and very keeping with the company image and I think will probably be very well ahead of a lot of things. The company's gone through a real learning curve uh, since they first started importing them in here into this country. Some of the original ones had frame breakage problems, etc. All of that quality control seems to be pretty well dealt with. The downsides of that are that I'm going to say this gently. I don't feel like there's a consistency in the knowledge among the dealers. Some of them are very good, uh, some more knowledgeable than others. But it is generally a second line among most motor motorcycle dealers. They're dealing like Indian brand motorcycles for the most part or BMWs. Um, and with that, it really, really does pay to know the motorcycle yourself. The other thing is that they're put together... Um, with parts that are so sourced locally in India. So I would uh, definitely put together uh, about a $200 shopping list and deal with some things right away. The batteries are not good. The batteries don't last long. Now maybe as I say this, that statement's outdated, but in 2022, December, um, the batteries that are initially in them don't last very long. You can wait until it gives you a problem or you can address it right away. Uh, the relays, the relays are a consistent problem. I, mean, I follow the groups pretty regularly and I'm not trying to slander the bike at all because I think this is nothing. You're gonna spend $30 and replace two relays with some good, uh, good relays. I'll put the link down to the ones that I bought down there. And yeah, they're Amazon links, so I'll get, you know, three cents on them or something, but <laughs> I, I don't even know what it is, but it's, I'm not trying to, I, I will never tell anybody that they should get anything that I don't think is a very good deal. The relays, don't wait till it leaves you stranded somewhere. Uh, the front end bearings, uh, I understand, um, are a problem with a lot of people and they're rusting. Uh, probably my biggest advantage is I basically never wash the bike. So I don't get a lot of water down there and my front end bearings at you know 20,000 miles are just fine. They're as solid as can be. But I actually bought a set, threw them in my tools for my, my planned failure of my front bearings which have never happened. Uh, I also have a set of clutch plates which seem to be about a 35,000 mile item. However, you don't hear about a lot of 35,000 mile bikes, um, but I have ordered two of them. A uh, uh, person named Explo Red, uh, who's a really an avid rider, uh, had had a clutch failure uh, in Mexico, I believe about 35,000 miles, and I believe, you know, uh, good old Itchy Boots, everybody says, if you ride a heavy land, do you know Itchy Boots? Yes, I know. I don't know her, but uh, I... You certainly can ha not have not heard of her. There's enough double negatives there. Anyway, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, she had that problem at one point too. So I've kept a cut set of clutch plates, but none of those are. That's none of that's just anything unusual. Relays, spark plugs, battery, a spark plug, singular um, battery. Those things I would probably address right away. The original tires are not stellar but they're not going to last too long anyway there, there's nothing wrong with them uh just that they don't wear real well so we will talk about the bike front to back we will talk about uh the things that make it good the things that uh, i've done that i think help improve mine and uh what i think of it now um i'll give you the short story i love this bike um enough so that uh you know i never see anybody at harley Riders do, you know, brand loyalty tattoos. I'm ready to do the Royal Enfield tattoo. Uh, and, and, and yes, if it blew up, I'd probably go, I don't know. <laughs> I'd probably buy another one. And I'll probably rebuild this one when it gets to that point. The engine is super simple. Um, 
I did have, you know, an issue with that years ago, or not years ago, miles ago, and uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about all the things that, we, that have been done to it, and really, uh, I well, let's quickly jump into that. I cooked a fuel pump, ran it way down low on gas. You can't do that with, with really anybody's fuel pump. There is some concern about these fuel pumps, and yeah, it seems to be the, the consistent problem. They have changed the actual motor, which seems to be a little bit more robust uh, in all the newer ones. But the main thing is you can't run these once they go into reserve for a long time. And I just basically ran mine down in Nevada. If, you got, if you're in Nevada, when there's a chance to stop for fuel, stop for fuel. Um, it's going to be a while sometimes. And that was, that was my mistake. Uh, you know, you just, you, you, you can't run a fuel pump in no fuel. That's what cools it and they will cook. Uh, and then if you go back to one of my earlier videos, uh, early on, um, when I first started on Transamerica Trail with it, I tore up a seal and dumped all the oil out of it and had to ride it 35 miles with basically no oil in it. Really impressive, uh, piston cylinder damage and more impressive that it kept running for 30 some miles. Uh, and got me out of the woods, literally. And uh, I've got to say that uh, we really, without much of a manual and nothing but the fact that I restored a lot of antique airplanes, so motors are motors, um, I managed to, you know, put in new piston ring, cylinder, blah, 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 in, in uh, gosh, I think it was like four and a half hours of time. And at that time, I'll just jump ahead again, at that time, I installed a tech cam TEC, and I'll see if I can put a link to them up there, um, which does about 20% 20, 20 horsepower and torque gain pretty much across. So it really lets it breathe a lot better. Um, the bikes are known for stalling at times and having some issues, and they do run very, very lean to medium emissions. So that, that the tech cam works better. A lot of people are talking about opening up their intake and exhaust but allowing it to flow more air when it's that lean really doesn't, really isn't quite the answer. Uh, putting a 16 tooth instead of a 15 tooth front sprocket on it has been wonderful. It really makes freeway a little bit less frantic, although it wasn't bad before. It's, it, people have different expectations. This is basically like an, a 61, 36 horsepower Volkswagen back in the day, you know, uh, it'll go, it's fine. But, uh, I hear people putting 16 tooth front sprockets on without changing the cam and the bike just bogs down. It, it doesn't have the power to pull it that way. So it's a good combination and it's, and it's worked very, very well for me. It allowed me to, to cross the country. So well, that's about all I've got to say on the inside here. We'll go ahead and step out in the garage, which uh, unfortunately there's just a lot of activity outside. We'll have to do this discussion in the garage. Um, and we will go over it sort of part by part, tell you what I think. But again, bottom line, in the end, want to save you a bunch of time? Wonderful bike. Wonderful, wonderful motorcycle. I say that knowing that there are problems. There are problems with every bike. I, I, I'm going to back up because I get people all the time say, I buy a brand new motorcycle. I shouldn't have to put, you know, $100, $200 into this. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't. Well, don't. Just don't. If you think that way, just don't. I've had every kind of motorcycle. All the major, well not every kind, but all the major brands anyway. And i got to tell you, that they all have issues. They all have issues. My Honda Superhawk, which I love dearly, shut down an ECU on me at 80 miles an hour down a freeway in the middle of the night and every single item on that bike shut down. I'm coasting in the dark. They also had very, very poor automatic um, timing chain adjusters. The KLR, been around forever. That's like a, the tank, the, 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 the gold standard of, you know, inexpensive adventure bikes there. They're still dealing with, you got to change the doohickey when you get it, you know. I mean, and people just accept that, and that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so if you're spending $5,000 brand new on a motorcycle and not ten or fifteen. And you're not expecting this to be a, a Tenere or a, or a V-Strom, you know, 800. You know, just just do it. There are a couple things that will make this bike very, very reliable. 
And aside from, you know, a couple quirks that I've mentioned, I've had no problem with it. We run over everything all the time. And um, all, all the surfaces, all the conditions, and uh, this bike just chugs along and eats it up. Basically, I spend more time worrying about a condition I'm going into, uh, and then I'm just always so pleasantly surprised that it was as though that bunch of junk on the ground was just painted there. We just roll over it. So we'll go outside. We'll talk about the bike a little bit. Well, not outside. We're going to go out in the garage, but uh, let's do it. Okay, let's go over this little beast. Uh, beast. One thing at a time, and I'll give you my thoughts and what I've come to feel about it. First of all, the windshield is a great place to put all your state's travel stickers. And one place you need to go, Cycle Camp, Forks, Washington, and meet Hippie Bob, who runs the place. Just an amazing, an amazing thing. One of the first things I did is I cracked a headlight, just caught a rock, so I put in a uh, LED light. I am not happy with this one. They put out this bright white light. It's not very great in its pattern. Um, I don't find that it illuminates all that well. Everybody just goes on and on about how great they are. I, I guess that's a matter of taste. Uh, the fact that the other one was kind of yellow, that's fine. It covered a lot of area. But uh, I'll put a link into the link. No, I'm not going to put a link. I don't, I'm not, I'm, I don't like this light. <laughs> then I have the Royal Enfield official brush guards. And yeah, I dropped it on there and it's kept it from falling over. I'm not real thrilled with them. But they're, they're solid enough. You have to keep this Allen bolt in the end very, very tight or they'll tend to rotate on you. Uh, let's see, what else have we done here? Front tire, I've got a Pirelli on there. I've been through several different ones. I think it's an MT21 if I remember right. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'll correct it in the notes if I'm not right. But uh, this has got, you know, like three, 4,000 miles on it now, and it's really not wearing too much at all. Little markers are still there. Brakes, change the pads. <laughs> Brake pads are one of the things I would add to that initial thing. It's not, a, it's not a, a, an absolute function requirement, but they, they are, they're, they're very wooden feeling in the originals. And I'll put a link to the pads that I put in there. It's, you know, like a $20 change. Takes you 15 minutes. There's one one. I don't bother with the rear. That's the front brake is your brake, and um, that really does the job. A lot of people change out the skid plates. Um, I've smacked mine around, but it really hasn't bent it up as much as you think. Being a soft aluminum skid plate. Coming up here again, I've added some bicycle pannier bags that I cut into two sections and mounted them basically with just zip ties onto the. Uh, the front frame guards and those are really really handy for things that are needed to you know quick access etc i very very reluctantly <laughs> added the double take mirrors i gotta say i just i didn't want to review them i didn't want to say good things about them because as sort of an adventure myself i was really irritated oh somebody stuck some mirrors on some rim mounts and you know and they get a fair amount of money for i gotta i gotta I got to eat humble pie here and say, these are excellent mirrors and the field of view is great. You can see everywhere with them and uh, in the dirty garage floor and everything, but uh, they, they work really, really well. Um, oh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, you can buy a dream catcher from the Navajo Nation when you're whipping through Utah uh, and that, that makes things work better. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Phone mount's nice. I'll put a link to which one I got there. I'm happy enough with it. But there are any any of the quick mount ones are good. I've never had anything close to losing the phone. It does vibrate and buzz a lot when there's no phone in there, which is a little bit irritating. So let's see. Moving on, what else have we done? Oh, Joe Rocket magnetic tank bag. That's okay. I wish it was a little bigger. Um, Everybody should have Izzy Was Here stickers on their motorcycles as well as Bunka Bikers. If you don't have these, you're not a real rider. I mean, you know, I mean, I hate to say that, but it's just true. We're moving back. 
Uh, I added a Goldfire pet case. Not everyone needs one of those unless you want to have a reason to get a pet. Uh, Izzy rides in that very well with a lot of complaining at the first. There's another one. I can't remember the name of the company, but it's the gold standard. Everybody buys the Pet Palace and all of this. This, from what I've seen on reviews, is stitch for stitch the same and a couple hundred dollars less. I'm very happy with it, except for a couple things they do collapse down easily so if you were to use these as mounting points here you might have some trouble a lot of people put an internal frame in them and it seems to have faded really fast <laughs> but other than that it works great we do a lot of different riding in different weather conditions i at rei i bought a a down you know an overstuffed down comforter and she can make a nest in here and stay nice and warm i started off with soft luggage and i was very happy with that and uh, it worked well, and I have no complaints about it. I felt a lot safer. If you should fall down, you're not going to get your leg caught under hard luggage. The main problem is that um, we live on this bike. Everything I have is on this bike when we're on the road. And I didn't feel comfortable even running into uh, the Circle K for a minute, much less going shopping extensively, which is where you're going to save all your money. So I did buy the Tusk Boxes. I love the touch boxes. They work really, really well. Uh, I didn't do anything to quick mount them. I used the regular Enfield pannier racks and just put them on there with U-bolts. It does work well. Uh, and, of course, you, here you can pick up all the... Uh, everybody needs all this, of course. <laughs> and uh, it gives me room, now that I have run out of room on my windshield, to add more stickers to the states that we go into. It's nice because I can strap dry bags onto the top, which I have a couple of them, sleeping bag on the back, uh, and it, it cleans up pretty well. It loads up quick. They're very solid. They're very lockable. That being said, I added a Scorpio alarm. This was my biggest, uh, I think it was about the biggest expense, but uh, it was about $300 or so, but that's with a proximity sensing unit. And I do love it. You keep a an inhibitor in your pocket. It's not so much a remote because when you turn the motorcycle on, the alarm shuts off. When you turn the, alarm, the motorcycle off, the alarm is armed. When you are close to it with the inhibitor, uh, it, it suppresses the alarm. But other than that, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You just get off, walk away. And it works. It works. It saved me a camera yesterday because I left the helmet strapped on. And I came back and somebody had been trying to pull my camera off the helmet and didn't get very far, thankfully. I will have to remount it. Uh, one thing I did here, I have a jump box. And as I've said, there, there there is a drain on this battery. This battery that I put in, I replaced from the original works fairly well. However, apparently there's a, a drain, as there is with many motorcycles. I can't emphasize that enough. A lot of people complain and complain about a various bike. I shouldn't have to. Okay, this, this is not a Toyota Corolla. Um, it's a motorcycle. And, and I think something's lost in our culture. Uh, I don't get on a high horse about that, but sometimes I feel like it. Um, this is the kind of motorcycle to return to what we were doing. But anyway, every once in a while I have to use a junk box. It's not too often, probably four times in the last, you know, six months. But being in a say that, I don't like to have to take off the rear seat and the front seat and get down to it. And then the connections aren't very good. So I'll do something prettier later. I keep saying that. But I just simply ran a couple primary wires out. Uh, I put a shrink wrap that I can slide off over the hot wire so it doesn't arc all over the place. But a simple solution like that, I can hook the jumper to it without discon you know, getting to the battery or anything and start the bike in about 30 seconds. So... Which is nice. Um, let me think. And that's about all I've got to say on the bike. Oh, I've got Cinco Seven O Fives on the rear. Yeah, I think that's what they are. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, they've been they hold up real well. That's a, that's a good combination. I don't worry about being as aggressive on the rear as I do on the front because that's the end is going to wash out on you. I guess if I was worried about being physically stuck and riding a lot of deep sand, I'd want to be more aggressive. I was running Dunlop 605s on the back. 
um, because they're really readily available. What's the funny thing is, and you should know this, a lot of times I think the rear tire is a 120 or 130, 90 by 17. Sometimes that's hard to get. And sometimes the bike shops will say they don't have anything. But if you go in there and you tell them you want the American size, I want a 4.5, um, uh, 17, you'll be surprised. They'll have a Dunlop 605 or something really cheap in that. They don't wear real well on the pavement, but they, they're, they're nice and aggressive and they, they work well. So just remember as a backup, if you got one of these bikes, a 4.5, 17, a 4.5, 17 is the, the U.S. alternative and works on there well. I see a lot of people switching over to tubeless tires and going through all of this and all. Um, you know, a tube will get you back home. You know, if you tear up the tire physically, you're in trouble. Yeah, it's a little more trouble to change, but it's not that bad of a deal. Um, these things spoon on and off pretty quick. The big trick is, the big trick is having a plan and doing it a time or two. And having good tire irons, that's that's probably 80% of it right there. You have the leverage. And then, of course, don't pinch the tube. You know, we've all done this. Uh, I added deer whistles at one point. I don't know if that does any good whatsoever. But you know what? I haven't seen a deer since I put them on there. Uh, I also haven't had an alien abduction, so who knows. Uh, seat concept seat. I did a little blurb on that. Back when I first got it, I will say that I still love it. Uh, I hear people talk about them being too hard. I hear people talk about putting air hocks on this and this and that and the other thing. And I, if you watch my seat review, you'll see my feelings on it. It has more to do with how you ride. At the end of the day, you are going to be trying to stand up or push on your feet and do everything you can. I don't care what seat you have. To try to get your weight off your rear end. Just do it. Do it from the beginning of the day. I keep pressure and I have a, you know, a conscious effort to keep some downward pressure on my pegs all day long. And I increase it and decrease it and unweight and you know soften it up. It really doesn't matter. The, the, the stock Himalayan seat is probably the best stock seat I have ever ridden. This is better, but it's not necessary. And if you're thinking it's just too hard, I, I, I saw somebody the other day, I got a seat concepts, I rode it 20 miles and I'm selling it and I'm buying this and that. This is you do realize these have memory foam to them that has to learn your butt shape. And that's it. Conforming to your shape is the most important thing. That's why, you know, you can go into McDonald's and you get on these hard fiberglass seats that don't have any padding whatsoever, and they're comfortable to speak. It's ergonomics. So, uh, I'm very happy with the seat concept seat. Uh, rock straps. Don't know how I'd survive without rock straps. And look, I'm talking, you know, it says a lot. Rock straps are great. Let's finish that thought. Yes, they're, you know, the, 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 the bungees of the future. They make everything secure. They're great end of story there but this is what i'm going to say is that i've spent more time talking about the accessories and the stuff that i put on this bike than the bike itself and the reason for that is this motorcycle again address the spark plug address the relays address the battery it just runs it just runs it just chugs along on and on and on up and down the hills out in the out air out back areas anywhere you want to go it just does it. It does the job. And that's what it is. It's a workhorse. And if you look at the ads that Himalayan puts out with all the, you know, fancy, you know, emotionally drawing out, chugging through the Himalayans in front of all the monks or, or now what they're doing, what they've just done is to ride this to Antarctica. This is a beautiful motorcycle. This is a motorcycle that will do the things that you want to do. Is it the motorcycle for everybody? No. Is it the motorcycle for most people? No. But if it's the motorcycle for you, it's the definite motorcycle for you. Now, as far as improving it, improving it by people put in uh, different front ends, fork emulators, different front ends. I know one guy's doing a whole inverted system. I can't even comment on that. I, I have no need for that. But if you're the kind of rider that has a need, that can be done. 
as far as more power, the cam, the cam and the sprocket were great. They are plenty for me. If and when this starts to lose compression, you know, and, and I, I don't expect to get, you know, 50, 60,000 miles before it's losing some. It's not a big deal. When I replace the cylinder and piston this time, I will probably put one of the big bore kits in. I think it takes it to from 411 to 460 cc's. Uh, uh, we were we were knocking and rounding one of the groups the other day. What other motors might fit? This motor is fairly large. It's a big it's a big single. Um, I don't know that a DR650 motor or something might not fit fit in there. It's only a couple adapter plates. It's not that difficult. Um, so. That's what I've got to say about that. We'll go inside and chat a little bit more, and uh, you know, I I hope <laughs> I hope you like these because I do these kind of things kind of off the off the winging it as we go. Uh, not really know what we're going to talk about, but uh, the gloves don't come with the bike. And there we go. Let's go inside and talk a bit more. Stepping back inside, you know, this may not be the uh, Ryan Fort Nine level. Uh, polished review and those are brilliant by the way and you know I don't have all the jokes and cynicism etc some but I believe in this bike and I try to present it honestly and I'm, I'm going to go back and harp on whether this is the bike for you I believe and I run into a lot of problems with this I don't know it doesn't bother me but I run into a lot of pushback that this is a bike to bring back what we used to do back in the old days when I was young, a um, long time ago, <laughs> which is work on your own motorcycle. This is an easy motorcycle to work on. There are no shim and bucket valves. It's all screw and lock nuts. Yeah, it's every 2,500 miles, but uh, something close to that. But it's easy to do, and they're not hard to get to. Um... There's not a heck of a lot else to do. And and I see people online. I bought this bike and and they want three or six hundred dollars for the first service. I don't want first of all that's insane. Um it's the, the it's an oil change and a valve adjustment and look everything else over and that's it's probably a it's probably an hour and a half job your first time. It's a forty five minute job after the first time you've done it. Um it's easy. It's easy. Uh, you can, you, you know, you're, if you can't adjust your own chain, change your own tires. Um, this is the kind of bike that's going to get you places where there's nobody there to help you. And it's the kind of bike that, and, and if it's not, then if, if, if it's not being used as that kind of bike, I can't say that you'll be happy with it. You know, there are... You know, 390 KTM is a much more fun, zippy, run-around-town bike. Uh, this is cooler, <laughs> you know. And, and that's nice, but I don't look at it for that factor. It's a great company. And I'm sure that the... Uh, well, I love to support the company, and I'm sure the dealers would complain about somebody going, oh, no, it's simple enough, you should work it on yourself. But it's a culture, uh, and it's a culture that's been lost in motorcycling, somewhat due to a general change in people over the generations, and I'm not getting on any because I just go, hey, okay, boomer. Um, and a lot of it due to the complexity of motorcycles, you know, I mean, again, if they, you know, the electronics go out on my Africa Twin, which I don't have, <laughs> if I had one, um, I'm sunk. But there's there's not a lot to these. I even, the, 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 only, the only thing here that you really can't do much with and not much goes wrong is the fuel injection. There's an adjustment that uh, should be made on the throttle monitor position sensor. Um, but these things are get on the get on the Royal Enfield Himalayan Facebook groups and you know it's 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 all out there. And if not, contact me. I'll walk you through it. I, and and if if I can't walk you through it and can't talk you through it, I'm all over the country. I'll, I'll come see you. We'll we'll work on your bike. But 
you should learn. You should learn. If you don't know how, you should learn. This is the vehicle for that because this is the bike that can get you into places where you're not going to have anybody else to help you. And that's where I think the match comes. When I say this is probably not the bike for you, I say that because it's not the bike for the majority of people. But I hope it's a bike for you. And if it's a bike for you, it's a wonderful motorcycle. It's a great motorcycle. That's my 20,000 mile, brutally honest review. Got nothing else to say.